Hi friends, hope you are doing fine. I am Dr. Ganguly. Welcome to my channel. So today I am going to make a video about the importance of the university or institution where you are doing the PhD versus the PhD or postdoc supervisor whom you have to guide your research and how these two factors play a huge role in your PhD and postdoc journey. So let's first look at the university aspects. So I would say that the number one thing about a university is that the rank and name of the university is very important because especially when you are doing a PhD or you are going to a place for postdoc, this rank or name is going to stick with you for the rest of your life in the curriculum we take. So what happens in the CV is that the last degree which you get be it the PhD or the last postdoc that essentially stays at the top of the list for your educational qualifications and people are always going to look at this degree and they are not going to bother too much about where you did your bachelor's degree from or where you did your master's degree from. So essentially the terminal degree supersedes all the previous degrees. So make sure that you go to a university whose rank or aim is as good as you can and that is going to certainly help you for the rest of your career. Now the second issue is a more personal issue and that's related to the cost of the place where you are going as well as the quality of life. Now both these issues are important and this will become clear to you once you actually land up at the university. So unfortunately there are some very good universities which are located in the downtown of cities and these tend to be very expensive. They are also locations where there is a lot of crime. So you need to be careful about this especially in the US for example. And you need to factor in the advantage you get in terms of rank and name of a university versus the expense of the place as well as the danger of the location based on the crime statistics. So very frequently you can go to Google and check out the crime statistics of a location and if these statistics are looking very dismal then you may actually not decide to go to this place. Now the third issue is that try to find more than one position if possible and this of course helps you a lot because it permits you to make comparisons between two universities. So if you have obtained two positions for postdoc or PhD you can then do a fair comparison of these two places and decide which is better in terms of these various metrics. So I would always suggest don't just apply to one university apply to a few universities and then get two or three positions if possible and then you are in a better position to make an optimal selection here. Now the final point here is that research groups are very important and in many situations universities have a center of excellence or a multidisciplinary center where there are a set of professors who do work in a similar problem. So this may be a center for complex systems or a center for stochastic dynamics or a center for molecular biology or a center for genetic algorithms. So anytime you have such a center there is a lot of synergy between the different professors, the different postdocs, the different PhD students. These guys all tend to stay in the same center, they work in the same center and so it is very easy to actually access help from all these people. So look out for strong research groups and in case you find a place with a strong research group you may actually be better off going to a university with less rank compared to somewhere else because you will have the advantage of the strong research group. So remember if you are at a very top university but you have an isolated research group where there is one prima donna professor working on some problem you may not have access to anybody else to talk about your research problems and this can sometime create negative factors for your career path. So now let's look at the second problem in this whole thing and that is the advisor. Now at the masters and bachelors degree level the advisor doesn't matter so much. To some extent it may matter in your masters thesis but I would still say it's not a whole lot. 
what matters is for PhD students and for postdoc candidates. So here having a good advisor is going to help you enormously. So try to find a PhD supervisor with a good lab. So you are going to spend most of your time in this research lab and therefore you need to figure out how is this lab and let's go through some of the things you can look at regarding this lab concern. So one of the things is the equipment in the lab as far as experimental facilities are concerned or computational facilities are concerned is very important because believe me professors are very reluctant to share their equipment with somebody else. So if you are a professor and you have spent a lot of effort in writing a research grant, you have obtained some expensive and fancy equipment and computational facilities, then essentially you like your students to use these facilities. And if somebody else's student comes along, most professors are reluctant to actually help them. Now again, in a research group, this may be different, but generally the case is that you are stuck with the equipment and computational facilities of your PhD or postdoc supervisor. So make sure this lab equipment is good because if you have a weekly setup lab, then even if you go to the top university in the world, you are going to encounter a lot of problems in your PhD and postdoc because without a good lab, you are not going to be able to do the research and therefore finish your work. Now, remember that once you have joined the university, the ranking of the university actually ceases to matter. What matters is the lab concern. Now, the next thing to look for is your supervisor's track record in terms of journal and conference publications, where he puts the name of the student versus his own name, how many people typically write the papers, what are the journals where the papers are published in? Are they the top journals in the field or are they humdrum journals? So some of these factors are going to be very important. Now, one suggestion I would make is that it's always better idea to work for newer faculty. So assistant professors, associate professors tend to have more time in their hands and are more hands on as far as students and postdocs are concerned. But if you are a postdoctoral candidate who likes to be left to himself, then probably it's best to work for a senior professor because this person is probably going to get a lot of funding and is going to let you do the research. So in some cases that may work out better. Now the next thing is that the lab should have a few set of students. So I would say three to five students is a minimum which a lab should have so that there is sufficient synergy for people to go and ask questions. So in that case, you can go and ask your friend, hey, I'm having some problem with this MATLAB code and can you help me here? Or I need a LaTeX template for the APS journal. And so you get the template and you straight away start writing a paper or you need a template for the thesis or you need some help with some experiments which you are planning to do. So this person may know how to use a certain machine. So this actually helps to greatly reduce the problems you have in your research and many times if a lab has only one or two students a student is at a severe disadvantage in such a lab. Now finally I would say that it's good to have a lab where there is a diversity in terms of nationalities, languages spoken and so on because in some case if you go to a lab where all the people are speaking the same language and this is not the English language let us say this is some different language and then you may find that you are not able to take part in most of the discussions in the lab you are not part of the set of people you cannot go with them to have lunch or dinners and so on so in that case you feel a sense of isolation and separation from the remaining lab mates so try to go to a lab where there is a distribution of different nationalities different subnationalities different type of people who speak different languages different ethnic groups, genders and so on, so that you feel comfortable in that lab and you can approach various people as far as your research work is concerned. So finally, to end this discussion, I would conclude that essentially the university you go to is important in terms of the name, that name will stay there on your CV for the rest of your life. But once you have joined the university, 
the PhD supervisor or the postdoc supervisor is going to play an enormous role and his lab is going to play an enormous role because believe me you are going to spend most of your time in the lab the university really does not matter to you once you join that place your life is about the lab your department and back to the lab and so on so you will be caught in this do loop until you finally get out of it so that was my take on this concept what is more important is it the university or the supervisor and i hope this will help you to make decisions and to have a better viewpoint about the university process so i will end this video here and i will see you sometime in a video soon